Hello and welcome to today's lab. Within your VCL session, navigate to the course web page on Blackboard. Along the left hand menu, select data and choose the NES 2008 data set. You'll be prompted to either open or save that data set. Click open and this will open up a session of SPSS. Today we'll be talking about creating graphics to display relationships between our independent and dependent variables. Just like in univariate analysis, graphics are very useful in presenting how the data are distributed. In bivariate analysis, we will always use what's called a clustered bar chart to display our relationships. There are four rules for creating a successful clustered bar chart. Number one, always include a title and source on your graphic. Number two, always place the dependent variable on the category axis and the independent variable in the defined clusters by box. This is the legend in your chart. Number three, make sure that your categories contain appropriate labels, not just numbers. And four, make sure the bars represent percentage of cases rather than total number of cases. All right, so let's see how clustered bar charts work in SPSS. Let's build a clustered bar chart for a relationship we've worked with before whether someone lives in the South, explaining variation in party identification. All right, so go to Graphs, Legacy Dialogues, choose Bar, and you're going to select the Clustered option, click Define, and sort your cases by variable name, and find your dependent variable, the party ID in three categories, and place that into the category axis, and select your independent variable, which is south, and place that into the defined clusters by. All right, and then up in the bars represent section, you're going to click percentage of cases, and then we'll go ahead and add a title and a source to our graphic. All right, so our title will be party identification by south or not south, and our source is the NES 2008 data set. Click continue, and then click OK to generate your clustered bar chart. Once you generate a bar chart, it's a good idea to check to see if all the pieces are in place. So the independent variable is in the chart's legend, south and not south up here and the categories of the dependent variable are appropriately labeled on the category axis. So here's our dependent variable, Democrat, Independent, Republican. And recall that we can edit graphics by double-clicking the graphic and opening up the chart editor. And here we can add percentages to each of the bins in your bar chart. So click on the Data Label Mode button and add the percentage of cases in each bin. This makes it a lot easier to compare across categories of the independent variable here. All right, and close out of the chart editor. All right, let's do another example that incorporates recoding and crosstabs in our relationship. Consider a hypothesis in which older generations are more likely to participate in politics than our younger generations. Imagine that your independent variable is at the interval level as year birth, and you'd like to compare it across categories of either a nominal or ordinal dependent variable 
of political participation or voting. To do this, you will have to recode the independent variable from an interval level to an ordinal level variable. Let's look at the independent variable and consider reasons for recoding it for our analysis. Go to Analyze, Descriptive, and Frequencies, sort your variables, and navigate all the way down to the bottom, select your birth, and click OK. As you can see, well, we need to break these numbers into generational categories. So those born before 1950 would be one category. Those born between 1950 and 1965 would be a second category. And those born after 1965. So to recode this variable, go to Transform, Recode into different variables, select your variable into the input variable pane, and we'll call the new variable year of birth in three categories. And the label year of birth in three categories. Click change and then define your new values. And because there's so many values here, we're going to use the range function and define the first category as those born between 1900 and 1949. That will be our third category. And those born between 1950 and 1965 will be our second category and those born between 1966 and 1990 will be our first category. Now remember that your recoding should make sense intuitively. If we're recoding year of birth, we want to make sure we pay attention to what numbers we assign to what categories. In the case of year of birth and age, there's an inverse relationship. The lower the year value, the higher the age value. So this is why I recoded the older generation as 3 and the younger generation as 1. All right, click Continue and click OK. Remember that assigning labels to these categories requires another step. So go to Variable View and SPSS will place any new variable in the bottom of the list here and slide over to the Values cell, click on Values, and we're going to assign a value to each category here. So our first category will be Young, second category will be Middle Age, and our third category, our highest category, will be Senior. Click OK. All right, and just to check that newly created variable, let's run a frequency table on that. Your birth three. And it looks right. All right. All right, with the recoded independent variable, let's now establish a null and research hypothesis. Remember that our null hypothesis is simply that no relationship exists between our two variables. Thus, it would be there is no relationship between age and voting. Our research hypothesis may be seniors are more likely to vote than middle-aged or young people. Now let's run a crosstab on our relationship as well as use using chi-square for significance and phi for strength. Because, as you'll recall, one of our variables has only two categories. So go to Analyze, Descriptive, Crosstabs, and we're going to select our dependent variable, which is voted. Place that into the rows box. And then our new independent variable, year of birth or age, into the columns box. 
Now click on cells and make sure the column percentages is ticked. And under statistics, we're generating a chi-square test for significance. And since this is a dichotomous ordinal, we're going to select phi and Kramer's V. All right, run that analysis. Starting with the cross tab, we can observe that age group does seem to have an effect on whether or not someone voted. We can observe in our cross tab, for instance, that the percentage of seniors who voted, 85.4%, is larger than the percentage we would expect if age didn't have any impact on voting, which is 77.6%. Likewise, if we look at the percentage of young people who did not vote, 29.4%, it is larger than what we would expect from the far right column, a percentage of 22.4%. So at this point, it appears that the relationship we hypothesized is present in this sample, but we cannot make an inference from this sample to the population until we interpret the chi-square values, and we cannot talk about strength until we interpret the phi coefficient. We observe that our chi-square value of, is 47.67 with two degrees of freedom, which gives us a p-value of 0, 0.000, meaning we can be more than 99.9% .9 confident in rejecting the null hypothesis and Based on observing the relationship in the cross tab, we can claim statistical support for a research hypothesis that seniors are more likely to vote than middle-aged and young people. And looking at the phi coefficient of 0 0.151, we can say that this relationship, while significant, is a weak relationship. And finally, we can put it all together by noting our clustered bar chart. So go up to graphs, legacy dialogues, choose bar, clustered, and take these variables out of here, and select our independent variable year of birth, define clusters by, and then select voted, our dependent variable into the category axis, make sure the percentage of cases is ticked. And then we're going to title our graph. Voting by age and the NES 2008 as the source. Click OK. And then generate the clustered bar chart. And remember, you can click on the bar chart and open up the chart editor. And if you select the data label mode, you can place proportions or percentages on each bin in the clustered bar chart. Great.